Killian Dane, mother flowers. Killian Dane. Hey, y'all, what is up? It's me. It's Steve here back at it one more time with a new video. Thank you all for watching this video, tuning in back into the channel. While you're here, hit that subscribe button down below. Give this video a big old thumbs up. A, also while you're here, share this video throughout your entire social media platforms, Facebook and Twitter, wherever the hell you share videos. Share this, because why the fuck not? Also, you can follow me on Twitter at HeelSteven, where I tweet throughout most of these shows, Raw, SmackDown Live, NXT, pay-per-views, but above all else, with each and every single one of you awesome mother flowers. So, last night I did not do a SmackDown Live review. I'm going to be very honest, I was so tired that throughout the watching the show, I crashed. And I woke up, and I went back to work. So, I wasn't able to do a SmackDown Live review, I apologize for that. However... What I am here to do tonight is do my NXT review for February the 7th, 2018. My overall thoughts and recap on the show, if you will. But as always, I want it from you guys down below, down in the comment threads, with your thoughts on this show, if you enjoyed it or not, let me know. So, NXT went back to Atlanta at center stage. And I'm going to say this overall. I like the fact that they went back to to center stage in Atlanta. Because I'll be real about it. Yes. Full Sail University. When you think about it. Is the home of NXT. Okay. And I get it. It's that one spot. Where it all started. What have you. But I'm going to say this. The people at Full Sail University. That crowd. Has become so annoying. Literally the most annoying thing. You could ever ever watch and listen to while watching NXT. And I like the fact that they're taking these tapings on the road. I hope they continue doing that. You know, right now they're in Atlanta, maybe somewhere down the road to take this to New York, maybe Chicago, maybe, you know, Philadelphia at the ECW arena, or maybe, you know, California. This different location that you can take this that can, you know, give you that NXT vibe if you will. And I hope they do that going forward. Eventually, yes, go back to Full Cell once in a while, but mostly take the tapings on the road. So the show kicked off what was supposed to be the rematch for the NXT tag title between the Undisputed Era's Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly versus Sanity. And before the match could even take place, Sanity decided to do a sneak attack on Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, and Kyle O'Reilly. There's a huge brawl. Everyone going crazy. The people are just going insane. William Regal had to come out because he just, you know, he had enough. He said, it. I had enough. Like, this is not the first time that we heard this, right? And he made the match official for the main event. Instead of being a tag team title match, it's going to be a tornado six-person tag. Between Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, and Kyle O'Reilly of the Undisputed Era versus Sanity's Eric Young, Kelly and Dane, and Alexander Wolf. People went crazy for it throughout the entire show. They were hyping up the main event. We had the first match of the show, a tag team match between Heavy Machinery and Riddick Moss and Tino Sabatelli. The rematch from a couple weeks ago where Sabatelli and Moss got the win over putting their foot on the on the middle rope over heavy machinery. This match as a whole, I'll be honest, was an okay match to kill off the show. I'm not saying anything bad about it. But during this match, you know, Tucker Knight and both of it just going crazy with their maneuvers. People people going crazy for them as well. There was a moment in this match that kind of like a little bit where they're teasing this whole breakup of Sabatelli and Moss. And I said this before in numerous reviews of NXT. You guys know my stance on Sabatelli and Moss. I think they are a throwback to power and glory. That being said, I predicted a while back, and I'm maybe now I'm wrong, I don't even know, but somewhere down the road, Sabatelli and Moss could be a potential NXT Tag Team Champions, right? But from what it looks like now, I don't know. Because throughout the entire match, people were chanting, Tino sucks, Tino sucks, Moss sucks, Moss sucks. And the end of the whole match was literally Heavy Machinery hitting their double-team finisher on Tino Sabatelli. And Sabatelli's outside when the whole match is over. He's like in pain, what have you. And he's extending his hand for help 
from Riddick Moss. And Riddick Moss is looking at him like disgusted and just walks away. And again, from what it looks like is they're breaking the team up. I hope they don't because I'll, you know, I said it before, I'll say it again. Them as a team, awesome, great. Them as singles guys, I kind of scratch my head to right now. Who to say? Again, if both these guys could have successful singles runs. I'm just one of those guys that does not want to see it right now. I just hope that they can work things out. Hopefully not one of those angles where they're done. Maybe they come back and just work things out and, you know, we'll see where things go. Uh, we had a Johnny Gargano promo in the ring since losing. Literally his first appearance since losing at full sale. I mean, I take over Philadelphia. I said full sale. I don't know why. And he got an amazing reception from the people over there at full at center stage. There I go again with full sale. Holy crap. And again, there's a standing ovation from everyone at center stage in Atlanta. People going crazy for Johnny Gargano. Um, literally, they were applauding him like he won the world title, in essence. And Gargano said, hey, you know what? Take over Philadelphia will be a night that he'll never forget. He brought out, he, he literally had his family, his wife, in attendance. When you hear this guy talk about everything that happened, you, you want to say to yourself, poor guy. Like, poor, like, God damn it. Like, you, like you want to feel bad. But at the same time, he's literally saying, hey, you know what? I didn't win the championship, but... The fact that I won your respect, that means more. And sometimes, again, in wrestling, even when you lose sometimes, it always comes out as a win. Like Gargano, right? He fought his ass off this couple of weeks that uh, take over Philadelphia with Andrade and Almas. And they had what people were saying, the match of the year. People were chanting match of the year, match of the year, right? But sometimes... There's, you know, even when you don't win a championship, you always also come out the winner, even when you lose, right? So, all this, and then out comes Andrade Tinama with Zelina Vega, and Zelina Vega's like, why are you even here right now? This should be Andrade's moment. Where's the confetti, the balloons? You lost, go away. And then Gargano mentioned the fact that, you know, his other favorite moment of TakeOver Philadelphia was when his wife jumped over the barricade and took out Zelina Vega, which brought out Kenneth LeRae. And apparently there's a stare down in the rain. It's like a, a confrontation between Andrade Sinama's Lena Vega and Kenneth LeRae and Johnny Gargano. And you see Kenneth LeRae once again take down Lena Vega. They're brawling. And you see Andrade and Lena Vega on a stage, whatever. And they're wondering, what's it going to take for Johnny Gargano to be gone, right? And Gargano says, you know what? Give me one more match with Andrade Sinama. And if I can't beat him, I will leave NXT forever. Now, there have been reports going going around, but they're doing the spoilers, that Gargano was gone from NXT, what have you. It is what it is. Also, in this whole promo as well, uh, he, he Gargano went to mention about Tommaso Ciampa. How he won't forget what happened at the end of TakeOver Philadelphia when Ciampa attacked him with the crutch behind him. Also, what happened at TakeOver Chicago when Ciampa turned on Gargano. But his mission as well is to get back at Tommaso Ciampa. So let's see how all this goes out. I know people are saying Gargano's going to the main roster, what have you, right, right now. Honestly, I think this is all part of the storyline. So we're, we'll see where things go right now. I'm open to seeing how all this develops. We get Bianca Belair versus Jessica Hill. Or Hicks, whatever the hell her name is. Jessica Hicks, I believe that was her name. Um, or Jessica Hill, one or the other, okay? It was a short match, a squash. Bianca Belair got the win. People are saying right now, oh, Bianca Belair, this, Bianca Belair, that. I think right now she is a slow work in progress. Right now, you get her these squash wins. You build her up, build her up, build her up right. I'm not saying you're being, I'm not saying she's being built up bad right now or wrong, but you slowly build this up. Like a project, if you will. Same thing with Lars Sullivan. You know, Lars Sullivan is another guy that I feel like could be one of the big potential players in NXT, but you got to slowly, slowly develop it. Same thing with Bianca Belair. Okay. Because the last thing I want to see, I, the last thing I want to see right now is Bianca Belair versus Ember Moon or Bianca Belair versus uh, Shayna Baszler. Speaking of Shayna Baszler, let's get right to that as well. So she cut a promo. With the press, which I find silly every single time I see the whole media press, right? 
and they're talking about you know about Ember Moon being hurt, being injured. Will there be a rematch? And basically, like you know, it only took her a month to be the most dominant female in NXT. If you don't believe her, ask you know uh, Aaliyah, ask Dakota Kai, ask any woman at the PC, or ask Ember Moon. She says, I'll give you all a spoiler right now. There will not be a rematch. There will not be a rematch because Ember Moon is afraid she will not challenge or give another shot at the championship and that Ember Moon is not a real champion. But then after all this whole thing was settled with how with this promo, Ember Moon responded to Twitter saying that if if Shayna Baszler wants another shot, then next week it will be the rematch between Ember Moon and Shayna Baszler. Let's see where that goes. Speaking of next week, we're also going to get the UK Championship match between Roderick Strong versus UK Champion Pete Dunne. That should be a very, very fun match to watch. Um, I do know that Roderick Strong uh, defeated Hideo Itami at two, over at 205 Live, which, by the way, 205 Live this far, these last two episodes seem to be going in a good direction. Apparently, Triple H is now taking over the creative in 205 Live, so... Let's see where this is going, you know. People are saying it's the resurrection of 205 Live. I hope it is for their sake. I still think them doing that show after SmackDown Live, after the Mixed Max Challenge, is just a kill. But we'll see where that goes. Um, but then after all, we also get a promo, an interview by Tyler Bate, talking about how he didn't win last week against Roderick Strong, but he looks forward to having matches with the likes of Johnny Gargano and Dryas and Alma, to name a few in 2018. Then we get the main event, a tornado t- six-person tag, the Undisputed Era versus Sanity. Oh my god, this match was fucking insane. Literally. If there's anything about this show that you should go out of your way to rewatch, is this main event right here itself. Just insane all over the place. Killian Dane was an all-star in this fucking match. I'll tell you that right now. He literally grabbed Bobby Fish. Well, they're all on the stage, and he threw them off the stage onto everyone that were at ringside from the guys that were in the match, if you will. Uh, there's a moment as well where Killian Dane does like a Michinoku driver, or Michinoku driver, how do you want to pronounce it, right? And he has Kyle Riley. As he's doing the move, he sits on Bobby Fish. Holy crap. Um, there's also a moment where... He hits, like, he eats the table. He goes for, like, a senton or, like, a cannonball thing that like Kevin Owen does in the corner outside the ring. I think to Adam Cole. And he misses and hits the table. Just, again, that's a complete crazy back and forth match. Near fall after near fall. Um, literally, this is something that you would see at a Ring of Honor. With all these false finishes and near falls, what have you. But it was all said and done, right? Killian Dane got back up. Fought everyone on his own and ended up getting the win for his team by by him pinning a uh, Bobby Fish again. I don't know if this is the end of this feud, but we'll see. I get the feeling though that eventually we'll get that tag team title match between um, the Saturday and the Undisputed Era. But also, we were supposed to get, to my understanding, now that I remember, right, we were supposed to get Adam Cole versus Killian Dane, which never took place as well. But again, overall, I thought this episode of NXT was a very good show with an insane main event. And let's see what happens next week. Next week, we're getting the NXT Women's Championship match between uh, Ember Moon and Shayna Baszler. We're going to get Pete Dunne versus Roderick Strong. And somewhere down the road, we're going to get Andrade Sienama versus Johnny Gargano again. And we'll see where that goes. We all know what's going to happen, but let's see how that develops. But overall, again, I give NXT tonight a very good two thumbs up. Hey, like like I'm Fonzie from Happy Days, right? But as always, guys, I want it from you all down below in the comment thread. Your thoughts on NXT tonight, if you enjoyed it or not. Or if not, on Twitter, at HeelSteven, where, again, I tweet throughout most of these shows. Raw, SmackDown Live, NXT, pay-per-views, and above all else with each and every single one of you as well. You mother flowers. Hit that sub button down below. Also, guys, this coming Sunday, Sunday, I'm bringing back the Golden Opportunity Tournament with 205 Live. I'm going to do my tournament, my take on what the Cruiserweight title tournament will look like live on this channel. So, again, hit that bell icon. Make sure you sub to the channel. Be notified when I drop video. Be notified when I go live. 
All right. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. It's me. It's Steve. And it's wrestling and whatever. Brah. Killian Dane, motherflowers. Yeah.